Well, let's get into the three commits to uh, lead off the podcast here. And let's start off with the highest ranked of them all. And that is Isaiah Williams, a six foot, 200 pound linebacker from Florida. He is a four star top 50 prospect on three recruiting services. They're on three 24 seven sports and ESPN. Brian, how does he profile at the next level? Multi talented kid. Uh, I think you could play him on either side of the ball. Isaiah is a good young man. I would, I would say will linebacker. Long term is where he'll end up. Where he is initially depends on how much he adds weight. You got to remember, he has two years of high school left, so it's iffy. Uh, he's in the neighborhood of 200 pounds or so, a little more now. He'll probably be a will to start, but he might be because he's so athletic, able to play that star position, as like Saban called it, the overhang linebacker slash safety. Man, that kid can really move laterally. The good news is you don't have to peg him. Because all the packages they have in college football, four two five, we go dime, et cetera. You can move him around. He's positionless, which is important. You got to have linebackers that can maneuver against the spread offense that has two tight ends in the game or five wide receivers. He can play against either. Really talented football. Right. And you also you mentioned something at the top there. Maybe you were alluding to just his versatility. But were you also saying that he's a two way player potentially? Athletically, you could put him running back and he'd figure it out. Really? Oh, yeah. That's, Has he been used there at all in high school? I don't think so. But like he's just physical and he's got a natural ability to stop and start. I like six two, two hundred ten 210 pound running backs. Yeah, I'm sure Syracuse probably does, too. But like I don't. I haven't met a single person that says I don't want a big running back who is fast. <laughs> if they do, they're out of football in the very near future. Um, yeah, he's a kid that could be an H back. He could be a flex tight end. Yeah, that, that's just a good football player. What do you think his ceiling is? Be in the NFL. He, he has the speed to do it. The ability to stop, start, break down into a football position and go laterally is the closest equivalent to the barometer that's most important in the NBA. Who are you going to guard? I don't care how much you can score. Yep. You can't guard somebody outside of like Steph, who's not exactly a dominant defensive player, but he's going to score 25 or more. Okay. They got to put up with it outside of those guys. Everybody else got to guard somebody or they go, he can break down and move laterally with guys that weigh 30, 40 pounds less than him. Can't teach it. Scott so he's, a very, he's a very good cover linebacker is what you're saying. Yeah, like, again, name a coach that doesn't want that a part of their program, and I will show you a coach that's soon to be unemployed. You know what I mean? It's just – it's everything now. Linebacker is the least valuable spot in recruiting, in my opinion, because it's almost impossible to get somebody to do what's necessary. You need to be able to take on an offensive guard that weighs 320. Good luck. And you still got to be able to cover a running back one-on-one -on -one that's 180. It's That's not, just not realistic. It's not realistic. You know, like he can at least run around the 320 guy. He's going to run through him, but he can figure it out. Like Ray Lewis even wasn't going to run through that guy, but he'd take angles, et cetera. If this kid takes the coaching ride and all that, the sky's the limit because he can run with kids that are smaller than him. Again, it's God given and he knows how to do it. So I think that's a guy that you can even use him as a blitzer on third and six whether it's inside, loop him around, you know, play the straight up edge, bend and go around the curve. Isaiah is very, very gifted. Awesome. And I'm going to ask this question for each of the three recruits here, because obviously we're talking about 2026. There is still a ways to go before these players can actually sign with their respective schools. How easy or how difficult is it going to be for Syracuse to hang on to this kid? Extremely difficult. Everybody in the country wants him. When I interviewed him a month or so ago, like Florida's coming after him. This is an example. Florida's maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes from where he lives, maybe an hour 20. That's going to be hard. But, I mean, he's going to have Michigan, Notre Dame, Texas. Everybody's going to offer this kid. Once they see his feel like this is a no-brainer, it's hard to say where he'll end up. But Syracuse, when I asked him, why'd you commit? He said that the coaching staff had built such a good relationship with him, he just felt comfortable. Okay. But he still has to go. high school. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. But that's a 16 year old answer. What What is the 18 year old answer? So right. that's the question. I don't know. But I do know that he will end up in the top 100 conservatively. He might end up being a five star recruit. He's a very, very good player. The offer list will be through the, through the route. 40 conservatively offers is what he'll end up with. 
Do you think that Syracuse is going to let him take visits elsewhere? Or are they going to try to lock him down? There's two ways to look at this. Certain schools try to do that, and there's different right. barometers for it. Like Clemson, I, 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 and I want to preface this by saying that I remember you mentioned about CJ May and why he decommitted from Notre Dame. They exactly. wanted to try to lock him down, so that's why I'm having you answer this. Yeah, it's very, very touchy. Like Clemson's the worst about it. If you take an unofficial, they might pull your scholarship. Notre Dame doesn't like it if you take an unofficial, but it's not as likely. Those are the two worst. Ohio State used to have that rule. And then this guy named Jeremiah Smith, who lives down near where you're from, said, I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm the number one player in the country, and Ohio State had to eat it. I haven't heard anything about that from Ohio State since. Certain guys get different rules. So if any, especially as South Florida kids, you're wasting your time. They are going to take visits come hell, come high water. It's not quite as bad where Isaiah is. He lives just a little bit outside of Orlando, but the chances of him not taking visits are about zero. If they go with a zero tolerance policy, he's not going to Syracuse. This Florida kids are different, man. Coaches hate that, and they don't like recruiting the Florida kids, but it's got the most talent, arguably, in the country. So it's kind of hard. You're, you're stuck in between. Uh, Clemson doesn't recruit for it as much as they used to because of that. They know most kids they won't take visits. And Dabo is about as old school as we all know as mm -hmm. anybody in the world. He so, hates even the transfer portal, which you got to use nowadays. Don't tell him that. Don't do not do that now. He might get angry with you. Uh, the point <laughs> I don't is, care if he gets yeah, angry at me. Know. He's objectively wrong. You have to use it. Every right. other school is using it. Yeah, I know. It's Even if it's just two or three guys, it, it's a poor decision. The point is still the same. I don't see how Syracuse in their position, if Kirby Smart lets kids take visits, how, how is Syracuse? Not right. Bad. You know what I mean? So I think he'll take visits, and Syracuse is just the leader. That's how I look at it. Fair. Enough. Well, I'll take being the leader over not being the leader. So that's that good. is exactly right. That You'd rather be exactly. the incumbent, right? Uh, yes. Don't talk about the presidential race, though. Demetrius Samuel. Let's move on to uh, the next recruit here. We're not talking politics on this podcast. Uh, so Demetrius Samuel, six foot two, one hundred eighty pound athlete. He is also from Florida. I'm going to ask you that question later on in the podcast about all these Florida kids. Uh, he's a consensus four star prospect. I know that he is an athlete. So is he more of a defensive back or a wide receiver? As a general rule, kids from where he's at, it's going to be defense historically, but the receiver thing has went nuts. I've seen him play, but I don't think it's definitive one way or the other. He's ranked as a, as a safety, but like athletically, he can play either. That'll take care of itself over the next couple of years. The, the funny part is he's he has the ability to change directions like you need his DB. It's harder to find that. But if you don't score in today's college football world, you're done. Think about the uh, Ohio State-Georgia game a couple of years ago in the playoff. Georgia yeah. and Ohio State, they might how much talent they have on defense. That game was in the 40s. It almost doesn't matter. That's what I mean. It's like if you have good quarterbacks, you have to sack them because even with NFL-level DBs, receivers going to get open. So I'm curious to see if anybody goes against the grain, and I don't know what Demetrius wants and says, hey, why don't you come play receiver for us? Does that matter? There are a few kids that will go against the grain of what most schools want, and they end up playing the other side of the ball, whatever it may be, and that's the school they'll go to. DB usually is what kids are recruited at because it's harder to find them, but the more valuable spot now is receiver because you find a big play guy, changes the game. Just depend, Every school is going to recruit him differently is my guess. Right. I imagine from a Syracuse perspective, this is just my opinion here. I think it would be as a defensive back because, well, Fran Brown's a defensive coach. He was defensive That's backs true. coach at Georgia. That's so it, it makes a little bit of sense. It makes sense there, especially if you think that there's a leaning more towards defense already. Uh, Absolutely. But if he could play receiver. That's great, too. Maybe you can use him both ways in college. We've seen that before. Um how does not having a set position impact him at the next level per se? Like, is he a great prospect only because he can play two ways or because he's really good in both? Do you know what I'm saying here? Uh, there's a lot of theories on this. Some people want kids just to train at one thing. He's at a high school program that's going to need him to be the guy that he doesn't come off the field more than two or three plays a game. So from that perspective, I'd imagine – that he doesn't care because his mindset is I got to play everything anyway, but you could make the argument for his development. It's better if he just played receiver or deep, whatever it is, corner safety, whatever. I don't think a kid like him 
he's real competitive, cares. I don't think it'll matter much. He, once he gets to college and he focuses on something, it'll take care of itself. I, I don't think it matters much. Fair enough. I, I just, I'm at, like, I remember Jabril Peppers. This is more of an extreme example at Michigan. And he was like the best player in college football, but coming into the NFL, it was like, he doesn't have a set position. Like, He's not really great at any particular area, at least from an NFL perspective. And lo and behold, you know, he's not the greatest player in the world. The way I would, for in any, if anyone's confused here, it's basically like if Shohei Otani in baseball was a average hitter and an average pitcher instead of being, you know, a great hitter or a great yeah, pitcher. Yeah. Like do, you sh- do you focus on one or do you just be average at both? That's what I was average, like asking about Demetrius he's, Samuel. He's the modern day Babe Ruth. I don't think you can use him for. I was just saying, imagine if yeah. Otani was an average hitter and an yeah. average pitcher. Like, yeah, yeah. Would it be I mean, better just... if he just focused on one of them and just be really good at it? Obviously, Otani is a is is a little. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, how again? How easy or difficult will it be to hang on to uh, Demetrius Samuel? That one is a little more difficult to say. He's from an area that doesn't get recruited quite as much. He's from the coast. I'm not sure. How many teams will go after him as much? He doesn't have the same skill set at a position that's unique, like linebacker, that's so hard to fill. But he's a DB, and like he's six foot, give or take, and he's real twitchy. He could probably play corner. Most people list him as a safety, but he's pretty athletic. So if people think he can play corner, then all bets are off because that's so hard to find guys. But if he's a safety, I don't think as many guys will come after him. It will depend on the definition. Um, but, again, any Florida kid, it's automatic, man. Everybody and their brother recruits Florida, whether they want to or not, because they have to. He'll end up taking business. Cool. Uh, let's move on to De- uh, Deontay Sheffy here. He is five foot 11, 180 pounds. He's a running back from Pennsylvania. So finally, not a Florida kid that we're talking about here. Uh, he's a 24-7 sports composite four-star player. What type of running back is he? The best way, and I'm not saying he's the same player, so – Please excuse the example. Kyron Williams, a guy that's kind of versatile, uh, can tote the football several times, take the pounding, but he's going to make guys miss, catch the football. I think that's the kind of kid that it, it's ironic. He's from State College. Like he's from where Penn State is at. But Penn State recruits running back national. Heck, they've got a kid committed this year from Arkansas that's a running back. It's bizarre. They've stuck one in there, and there's a couple other really good running backs in the state of Pennsylvania, so I don't think Penn State's going to go after the kid. They're kind of lucky, but well, he's a good football player. He could play at Penn State or anywhere else. That's a great pickup for the Syracuse Orange because I love versatile backs like that. Again, three down guy. He can help you in the pass game too. So good football player. I might be drafting Kyron Williams in my fantasy draft in about a month. You should consider. He's should a pretty good player. Him. Uh, you, think? you think I picked him off waivers last year and he did wonders for my fantasy team. I, I bet he did. <laughs> he did I, probably for a lot of people. You know that that team still didn't make the playoffs. Like my fantasy team last year was loaded and I didn't make the playoffs. I, I know Kyron Williams was on it. Um, I didn't have Puka in that league, but I know someone else who did, but I had a loaded team. I just didn't have a good quarterback. I didn't make it. That kind of matters too. Cause my, my strategy is typically wait on the quarterback. I might have to change it. I might have to take Mahomes or Hurts early in the draft or something. A uh, little bit off topic from Deontay Sheffy, but I just brought it up because of Kyron Williams. Uh, once again, how easy or difficult is it going to be for Syracuse to retain this kid? If Penn State goes after him, good luck. If they don't, he's going to Syracuse. That would be my guess. Like, again, he's from right down the street. I'm sure it probably irks him they didn't get an early offer or whatever, but they recruit running back at an elite level. I don't know. They've got another kid in state there. They've got committed, et cetera. We'll see how that goes. But, man, you're talking about a kid right in your backyard. It'll be interesting to see what Penn State does. That That's a really interesting question. Is Penn State like the, the gold standard for running backs, per se? I mean, I know they had uh, Saquon Barkley there recently. In the Miles last five Sanders. years, it's them and Georgia. Barkley kind of sets a trend. He's a top five pick. So yep. That's self-explanatory. But they just, they're so good. They got two guys that are going to be juniors this year. They're both going to turn pro. So uh, people look at that. I get it. I get it. So that might, I mean, because you said they go nationally, that might be why they don't look at maybe a guy like Sheffy yeah. unless he's he really that you know, great. I mean, I'm not saying Sheffy's bad or anything. It's just, you know, they can get the top the guy in the country. He's right down the street. 
You know, it's like, wow, they didn't take, you know, I was surprised by that. Whatever. All right. Well, that's Penn. That's Penn State's loss, I guess. Syracuse's gain. I mean, if Penn State goes after him and changes their mind, there's still plenty of time. Uh, So we'll see what happens with him.